Deconstructing the Political Spectrum. Now here we have the general gist of the typical left, one-dimensional left-right spectrum. We have, on the far left, we have the communists. On the far right, we have the fascists. Over on the left, we have the liberals and socialists, and we have our conservatives on the right. In the center, of course, we have our moderates or centrists. This is an incredibly flawed political spectrum. Um, one thing to consider is that you know, where do libertarians and especially anarchists fit in? Do the anarchists belong over with the communists? They certainly don't belong over with the fascists. Um, they really are, are they or are they moderates? I mean, they're, well, they can't be moderates either because they don't really, particularly the anarchists, they can't be moderates because they don't really fit into any kind of political power in the first place. So clearly, libertarians don't even fit into the spectrum at all. Uh, libertarians are accustomed by people on the so-called right of being accused of being leftist by the right and accused of being rightist by the left. But uh, according to these common characterizations, they're neither. So clearly, this political spectrum is wrong. Another problem is, are communism and fascism really polar opposites? Well, they certainly might have their differences, clearly not. Um, both of them are systems of extreme government control, all the same. They may differ in their socioeconomic content somewhat, but they are clearly not polar opposites. So th this political spectrum has to be tossed out. Here we have the Nolan chart, which is somewhat better than, than the traditional left-right spectrum in that it has two dimensions. Uh, economic and personal freedom. Um, the advantages of the Nolan chart is that it does make room for libertarians and anarchists, and it distinguishes uh, extreme authoritarianism from the from more moderate left and right. This political spectrum, however, is flawed as well. For one thing, do the far left really consistently support personal freedom? And do the far right really consistently support economic freedom? Since when does the far right support a completely free economy? And since when does the far left support complete self-ownership and personal freedom? Uh, the, one of the problems with this spectrum is the mere separation between personal and economic freedom. They really cannot be separated. You can't have personal freedom without economic freedom, and you can't have economic freedom without personal freedom. So. Uh, this spectrum suffers from the fallacy of splitting personal and economic freedom. And now we turn to capitalism and socialism, um, if we want to get into economics. Um, I would say that capitalism and socialism are anti-concepts. Uh, they don't have any objective meaning anymore. and I mean, consider, um, capitalism is typically used to, to just refer to the currently existing system, and socialism is used to refer to the currently existing system in various ways as well. So what do we have? Do we have capitalism or socialism? Um, the theory of socialism is supposed to be workers' control, yet the theory, yet uh, when attempted to be put into practice, uh, socialism is also considered to be... What, what is socialism? Is it government ownership or is it workers' control? If um, these th two things seem to be uh, opposing in principle, if you have government ownership, you have less workers' control because the workers need to have ownership. So these are antagonistic principles. And the same with capitalism. Uh, if, if capitalism is supposed to be a free economy, then you can't have protectionism and special privileges from the government. So what is capitalism? Is capitalism uh, privileged to big business and protectionism, or is it a completely free economy? Uh, these are two antagonistic principles as well. You can't have both at once. So capitalism and socialism pretty much have to be tossed out at least in their contemporary meanings completely, because they don't have any meaning. This is how I think the political spectrum really is. 
you have liberty and you have tyranny. And the left and right and everything else in between is just distractions on the road between liberty and tyranny. It's just rhetoric and it's cultural preferences. That's really all it is.